We are still seeing the impact of Emmett Till's death nearly 67 years later. Today would have been Till's 81st birthday. A group of men kidnapped and killed him on August 28, 1955. Brittany Flowers talked with a man from West Michigan who has studied this case extensively. Uh, Brittany, what did he say about why this story is still so important and so relevant? Well, Teresa, there are still questions to this day about what really happened to Emmett Till. Roy Bryant and his half brother, J.W. Milam, were accused of the murder, but an all white jury, all male jury, acquitted both of them. No one ever was indicted or prosecuted for the involvement in the kidnapping or murder. I sat down with a West Michigan man named James. James Herm, who has studied Till's case for the past five years. He gives presentations throughout the community. Herm says a lot of people don't know about what happened to Till because it took nearly 50 years for Mississippi to memorialize the 14 year old. He added there was a lot of misinformation about what really happened to Emmett. When the case was reopened in 2005, it started getting more publicity again. In June of this year, the Associated Press got its hands on an unpublished memoir by Carolyn Bryant, which again sparked public interest. The horrific crime that was committed and so forth, the legacy and memory still lives on because of all the people who took up the courage to end racism in this country, and we got still a long way to go. President Biden signed the Emmett Till Anti Lynching Act into law at the end of March. Representatives with the Michigan FBI office said they have not prosecuted any crimes that would fall under the act since it became law. Uh, the federal office didn't have any data available for the rest of the country during that time. The act opens the door to a 30 year prison sentence when a conspiracy to commit a hate crime results in death or serious injury. Teresa. All right, Brittany, thank you.